We're here on the South Dakota Iowa border right by the beautiful Missouri River at the pot calling the kettle black grasslands and uh, What we're looking at over there are the Los Hills. What we're looking at right there is feral hemp. It's non THC Cannabis left over from when you could still grow hemp for fiber Which would have been a great idea not to effectively cancel a hundred years ago you know, by pigs like William Randolph Hearst and, you know, racist politicians that were weaponizing it for their own uh, political gain, etc. But uh, there's still a bunch of pot left over, you know. You can tree smoke that all you want. It's not going to do anything but burn your lungs. But it is a great fiber. I'd love to be wearing a flowing hemp shirt right now because it's still kind of warm and humid. Anyway, what you're looking at there are the Los Hills. Los is basically, uh, it's glacial flour. It's it's a, a powdery substance that was ground down by glaciers a very long time ago. Well, still pretty recent on a whole geologic time scale scale of things. Uh, but it was ground down by glaciers and then washed down from the north via the lovely Missouri River. And then, uh, as you know, when winter would come uh, and uh, you'd get those dry winters and the glacial flow down the river would decrease, then the winds would come, those harsh prairie winds, and they'd blow to Los from the west to the east into these beautiful aeolian, aeolian, garlic aeolian, that just means uh, windblown hills. And so it's a very strange substrate, mainly composting, consisting, excuse me, of very, uh, very fine-grained quartz sediment. So we're going to go check it out, see what's going on. This property is owned by the Nature Conservancy. We'll see if they let us in. They protect land. They also send out a lot of freaking mailers, which I get tired of. That's why I stopped actually donating to them. But uh, maybe they'll let us in there. We'll go check it out, see what's going on. Let's go. Anyway, Al's driving right now. So uh, we're, we're going to put this, you know, this, this is for the cops. It's, it's called pot for the cops. It's you know, basically a way to increase morale among, uh, you know, our, our first responders. And uh, in states where pot is still illegal, it gets them all excited. And later they take it to the lab and test it, see it doesn't have any THC. They might get a little dis disappointed. But for that brief moment, when you can look in a cop's eyes and you see like a child on Christmas, he's excited. That's what this is for. We're trying to boost morale among, uh, you know, the, the local uh, police force. So here we go. Now, it isn't invasive, but you can see it's got a lot of bird. It's got a lot of bird seed coming out. The birds love those hemp seeds. Look at them. There they go. There they go. Jimmy don't like it, but there they go. Oh, they got little guys with them. You see the reflection in the water? It's, it's magnificent. Oh, yeah, there you go. There, there, look, it's, it's, like a, it's like a Nat Geo documentary. We just need someone with more wholesome vanilla voices than us narrating it. But look, he's like, what the fuck is that? I wonder, if those are, I wonder if those are pure or if they got some cow in them. Jimmy, shut up, Jimmy. Yeah, it's cool it, Jimmy. You're ruining the moment. Look at him. Look, look, they, oh, look at the little one. Look at that. There he goes. Look at it. Yeah, good luck trying to herd those, Jimmy. Good luck. Yeah, they probably got some cow in them, I would assume. An animal that's been totally adapted, selected for the landscape, unlike the cows, which are generally dumb as bricks. Anyway, here is a nice road cut, and you can see we've got a ton of big blue stem and sorgastrum the tans. There's the sorgastrum the tans right there. It's a common name, Indian grass, some stupid common name. Just call it Sorgastrum Natanz. Doesn't sound as ridiculous. And then, uh, and then we got the big blue stem with those Andropogon garidii, with those beautiful, those beautiful purple uh, trifid inflorescences. Those those inflorescences that appear in a in groups of three. God, what a beautiful grass, man! You can see it's getting massive. Oh, who's this guy? Just just hanging out on me. Anyway, we also got a Morphocanescens here. It'd be lovely to see a rattlesnake, a prairie rattlesnake, but they're probably not out till later. We got a morphocanescens, the lead plant, gone to seed. Of course, there's that chalky, that hairy blue chalky mint green foliage, so so covered in scales, in a pubescence. And there's the fruits, just essentially little fuzzy beans. What else we got? You can see some of the geology right there. Oh, a lot of yucca as well. A lot of yucca and glauca. I'm willing to hazard a guess. You can see a bunch right there. Not super diverse, but what is growing here is adapted to these more arid conditions. The andropogon, especially with those deep ass tap roots, or deep ass fibrous roots, excuse me, that go down 20 feet. They're monocots, so they've got fibrous roots. Dicots have, uh, look at all that, god damn, look at the big blue stem. Dicots, of course, have tap roots. Monocots have fibrous roots. But they're going 
10 feet, 20 feet down into that soil either way. And some sumacs over here. What else we got? And right there we got a nice outcrop of loess, of that glacial powder, probably mixed with a little bit of uh, just organic silt in there as well, but that's what all this is. Very distinct. Love to look at it under a microscope. Beautiful cottonwoods. So amidst an ocean of big blue stem and Budalua, looks like a curtipendula, we got yucca glauca. See the fruits up there, those dried dehiscent capsule fruits. Wonder what moths are pollinating this, because again, all moths, all yuccas are pollinated by moths. Got a morphokinescence, full seed right there, sumacs, some roosts, some cottonwoods, and then just this ocean of tall prairie grasses, namely big blue stem. One of the few dominant small trees here, Cornus dramondii, the dagwood. It's got those, it's already going, it's already turning red for the season, got opposite leaves, and then it's got those white droops. They look like berries, but they're a droop. They only got a single seed inside. Ooh, they got this uh, milky, milky white pulp on them as well. Sumacs, cottonwood, some ash, and then of course Junipers virginiana, the eastern red cedar. Not a true cedar. There are no true cedars in North America. They're restricted to the uh, old world, namely Eurasia. Uh, but uh, you can see one, one tree right there is uh, flushing blue fruits, and then another individual is flushing yellow male pollen cones, microstroboli, male cones. Almost, almost look like two different species, but same species. You know, uh, aggressive pioneer species that, uh, you know, if something hasn't been, a place hasn't been burned in a while, it tends to take over. So that's the importance of fire. And fire is really important for controlling ticks and chiggers too, which I wonder I'm gonna, how many I'm going to pick up walking into this ocean of big blue stem, but fuck it, here we go. Recipe for some uh, itchy ankles later. Oh, look, it's Delia. What is this? Delia purpurea? Which one? A relative of that lead plant, again, those are just little beans. When you look at them up close, it's a little bean. Relative of lead plant with uh, foliage that smells nice. Then we got that yucca glauca, and then more lead plant, more amorpha canescence. This looks like nice crotalus territory. This amorpha canescence, it's kind of rare in the prairies of Illinois, at least the ones around Chicago. It's not super dominant. It probably grows very slowly, can probably live very long, uh, but... Uh, it's also adapted to hotter, drier sites. A lot of the prairies in Illinois are just not, not that hot and dry. Uh, but out here, where we're a little bit further west and the continent has dried out a little bit more than the Mesic East, uh, I could see it being a dominant species here, especially on this lowest substrate. Look at that stuff. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. There you go. There's the loess. You know what the loess is? Yeah, see, that's all amorphokinescence. That's all lead plant. Oh, and it looks nice out there. I bet it looks great when it flowers. Bright purple flowers. Oh, look at a dragonfly. Okay, God, we're going to Omaha later. We're going to listen to that fucking Waylon Jennings song. Doing a show in Omaha later. Take this in. And we have to go, you know, be driving past the car dealerships and personal injury attorney billboards and plastic signs. Look at that amorpha. What a great fucking plant. With the, look, look at it. With the sorgastrum, the tans in the background. Why would you not want to recreate this, you know? Why would you why would you want the horticultural bullshit that's 5,000 miles away and plant it all in uniform lines, even spacing? I don't get it. Oh, here's a liatris, a blazing star already gone to seed. There's the flower heads. You can still see what the phyleries look like, which should be helpful for uh, diagnostic purposes, figuring out what, what uh, species we're looking at. And then there are the leaves. So very few colline leaves, only, only a couple. They're all withered already, and then there are the, there's the, uh, is that a different plant? This rosette, I think that's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. Those, it's got, uh, all the leaves are at the base, or the larger leaves are at the base. Now oh, here's a liatris. Here's one that just finished up. You could, yeah, is it just aspera? Maybe it's just liatris aspera. God, that, that amorphokinescence just looks amazing. See, some species are more dense than others, but it's still not a monoculture. No, oh, we're not in Minnesota anymore. It's fucking hot. Got a bunch of saladago, and then we got 
some puffballs coming out, not mature yet. When they're mature, they dry out, and then that's when they're getting their spores out there. It's kind of a dick move if I pick it before its uh, spores have matured, but I'll leave it in there for now. You got some more over there. So we're on these hills, we're on these ridges. You can see they mowed it for you here in the ice, but it's uh, thicker as you get down into the ravines and then up on the ridges, it's where you're encountering all the, the grasslands, like the big blue stem, which is still going off, the andropogon, which is still going off. There's those red stigmas and uh, those male anthers uh, dumped out of those uh, spikelets. Sorgastrum natans is still going off as well, as you can see right here. The dogs are a little hot. They'll be fine. See the anthers right there? Wild to still see this flowering. How long does it take that seed to mature after uh, it's been fertilized? Oh, power line easement. That's nice. So they keep it clear. They keep the woodlands from encroaching. They mow. So apparently they're not burning this. This isn't, isn't Nature Conservancy property anymore. This is like a little prairie preserve nearby. But you can see what it would look like if they didn't keep it mowed. And then that, of course, would restrict plants like this from growing there. It's a morphokinescence, which is still flowering. God, I love this. I love this fucking species. Look at that. A single, uh, a single petal on those flowers. The whole thing is fuzzy. What are you doing? It's still flowering now. It's a little late. It's like late September. What's going on, pal? Go ahead. You got the. Uh... See, these are already done. These are these seeds. Yeah, I think the seeds are already gone. You can see they've already fallen out of those calices. Unless they're still in there. Well, no, maybe they weren't fertilized to begin with. Something odd is going on with this individual. But it's nice to be able to see it and get an idea of what those flowers look like in this video. I mean, you could look up a photo on, on the interwebs, of course, as well. But you could see how this is a fucking healthy amorphokinescence, man. Again, this is not super common in uh, the prairies of Illinois. I wonder how long they can live for. Ah, oh, just flourishing here beneath the power lines. That Cornus Dramondi I had dogwood really takes over, man. That's that's another reason to burn right there. It's a native. You got to keep it in check, though, or else you're going to get a reduction in the diversity of all these cool grassland species. And for trees, we got Ulmus rubra right there, slippery elm. Oh, the cicadas. That's a nice uh, background noise. And then good old Quercus alba. Some Fraxinus species as well, but mostly uh, elm and oak. That is an enormous amount of Asclepias verticillata. The verticillate milkweed. I wonder if those fruits are ready yet. It looks like they're just about to crack open. Verticillata because it's got verticillasters of leaves. Or verticillate uh, leaf arrangement, more correctly. Verticillasters. Oh, look at the uh, that white underside. Verticillaster is technically an inflorescence like you might see in the members of the mint family. Great to see. Oh, it's a trifecta, little blue stem, Schizacrium scoparium, big blue stem, Andropogon gerardii, and then a uh, Sorgastrum natans right there. Beautiful prairie grasses. That'll make you appreciate the uh, grass family poesy. Who do we got in there? Symphiotrichum? What is that, Dramondii or something? I can't even see in there. Oh, we're going to make a bumper sticker that says, I break for road cuts, right here on the Iowa-South Dakota border. We got Euphorbia marginata, aka, what's the name for this? Snowballs on a mountain, what is it? Snowblow, snowblower on a mountain, snow on a, some dumb common name, I don't know. But you can see the cyathea, you can see those uh, green three carpeled ovaries and the hint of bleeding latex. And then more interesting, we got some nice fossils here, which is why I stopped in the first place. 90 million year old bivalve fossils. Oh, that's a nice piece. I'm gonna take a couple of these. It's a whole smorgasbord of interesting stuff. You can see there's no Lois right here. This is just the good old rock outcropping that's slowly eroding. We got some obnoxious, uh, where is it, the Russian thistle? Let's see, well, nah, maybe it's not. You know what, that may, maybe that's not Salsolotragus, but it's one of the relatives, one of the uh, invasive Amaranthaceae members. Oh, there's some cool stuff here. Look at this. Look at this, only got a few minutes, got to be in Omaha in two hours, but, but, uh, goddamn. 
Look at all that. Look at all that shale. 90 million year old shale. Ooh, what's going on here? Iron concretions? It is iron. It does feel rather heavy. What's it doing in this uh, outcrop of shale right here? You can see there's a few more of them right there. Oh, it's a lovely piece. Very thin, very fragile, but a lovely piece of the, uh, a lovely remnant of the Western Interior Seaway.